been about three days since I bought the Hisense Chromebook from Walmart. And let me tell you, I'm extremely impressed with its performance. This little laptop has delivered almost a full laptop experience from what I normally do with laptops, which is general web browsing, um, mainly YouTube, honestly. That's usually what I use a uh, laptop for about 90% of the time. Uh, some very, very light social media use and eBay, Amazon, that kind of thing. This thing does that beautifully. Um, the only issues I've had with it at all have been while on Facebook, when you're scrolling through large amounts of stuff, sometimes it stutters and kind of hangs up a little bit, but it doesn't seem to be too big of an issue. Um, the video playback on this device is flawless, as long as 1080p is the only, or the maximum you would need to play back, which, I mean, the screen isn't even 1080p. I think it's uh, 1366 by 768 so there's really no reason to play back anything higher than 1080p. I noticed some people trying to play back 4K video from this on um, some other reviews and things, and it turns into Slideshow City on that, but there's really not a reason to do that unless you want to plug this in via HDMI to a TV that happens to be 4K, which... Frankly, if you're going to be doing that, get something more powerful than this. If you can afford a 4K TV, you can probably afford a better computer than this. However, for a nice little cheap portable machine that you can use for travel, for just doing schoolwork, taking with you on the go, this thing is great. Um, it, it, it was the best out-of-box experience I've ever had with any computer. I plugged it in. First of all, the reason it wouldn't turn on, it was some kind of uh, self-protection thing. You had to plug it in first for the first boot. It was actually like 85% of the way charged right out of the box, so that was pretty nice too. Um, plug it in, fire it up, log in with a Google account, and you're good. I think I've installed one update on it, and it just rebooted about 30 seconds later. It was back. Um, it's just kind of a no-nonsense little computer. It does everything you need it to do for most day-to-day -day work, and it's super cheap, $149. I mean, this is by far the best deal you can get for a computer in this price range. Um, and there's really nothing else in this price range that even comes close to this for um, general uh, usage. The only thing that I can think of that would be even close to the value is this little device here, which is a WinBook. Uh, TW801 Windows 8 tablet, which is a fantastic device, and I picked it up for the um, around the $90 price point. Um, highly recommended. I will be doing a review on this soon. I've been using this all summer. It's been a great, great tablet. However, it lacks one very, very important thing, and that is a keyboard, which this has quite a nice one of. Um, this keyboard isn't the best in the world, but it's perfectly usable and it's great for typing up notes and things. So, honestly, this is a great little computer and I'd recommend getting something like this over a tablet any day. That's just me. I personally don't like tablets all that well. I got that tablet so I could watch videos on it and that's about it. Um, it's been great for that too. It plays full 1080p stuff, no problem. It's running some kind of quad-core Intel Celeron or something in there. One of those Bay Trail processors. They're really, really quite good at playing back high-definition video. This thing is running a rock chip processor, I believe. A little quad-core 1.8 gigahertz. I think it's like an ARM-based chip of some kind. Really performs perfectly fine. It's got 2 gigs of 1600 megahertz DDR3 RAM in it. No complaints. It doesn't seem to hang up on much of anything. The OS itself is really speedy. Like, you want to go ahead and launch Chrome. It's just there, done, you know. It, it's really quite, quite fast. Um, if you want to use Plex with it for playing back videos, works extremely well. Um, I'll give you just a little bit of sample on that. It's got Limitless up on here. We'll go ahead and try playing that. As you can see, that's playing full 1080p. No problems. 
I will mention that the speakers are a bit subpar on this device. They're not fantastic. However, they're not bad either. They, they're they loud. They're plenty loud enough. They just lack bass. They're very treble oriented, shall I say. Somewhat tinny as well. They're, they're not fantastic. They sound okay when you're playing certain kinds of things through it. Vocals don't sound too bad. But any music that's got any bass to it at all, you'll be very disappointed in what it sounds like through this. But it sounds a lot like a lot like netbook speakers did back in the day when those things were relevant. Um, so, I mean, they're usable. The best way to describe them is functional. They do their job. They get the point across. They work. They're not going to blow the roof off anything. They're just... They're there. Um, screen? Really quite good. Um, as I said before, I think it's only 1366 by 768. However, it looks... When you're using it, you don't notice any pixels or anything because it is a very small screen. So it's pretty high pixel density for the size, and the colors are really, really good when you're looking straight on. It also gets incredibly bright. I don't know if you can see that. It, it's almost painfully bright when it's all the way up. Um, so the screen is okay. The uh, viewing angles aren't the best. You pretty much have to be looking at it. Um, the the um, vertical viewing angles are pretty poor. But side to side isn't bad. Um, it does wash out a little bit. It really washes out when you look at it from...